Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the second episode of Anjo 118 in. Yes, we didn't can it after one. Have some faith in me. Just a wee bit of faith. I know that I've not done well with these series in the past, but we can make it beyond one episode. Surely I'm not that bad. Anyway, today, we're hopefully going to see our first piece of action under the new tenure of Ryan Fitzsimons. The new tenure of Ryan 118. Can we do better than Ange Postacoglu? Probably not. Right then, welcome back. Yes, it's been a few days. Like and subscribe. We will be here throughout the entirety of the World Cup playing this save. How, you, how have you found the World Cup so far? There's a genuine question for everybody so far. How are you finding the World Cup? Su surprises today. Denmark dropping points to Tunisia in the group stages. But the biggest talking point, wow, Argentina losing 2-1 to Saudi Arabia. Who would have seen that coming? Not a lot of people. I don't even think the, the Saudis would have seen that coming. I don't think that we would have uh, expected that in a million years. So... There's my World Cup update for today. We're back on Football Manager. We're hoping to get to at least the first game of the season today. If you haven't seen the first episode, I urge you to go back and check it out. It is live on the channel. We created our tactic in the first episode. I'm not going to go over it too much, but this is what I believe to be the best 11 at Celtic at this moment in time. Well, my best 11. This is what I want to, to roll with just now. Um, and, and then we'll obviously sort out our depth afterwards and who will get more chances and rotation and etc, etc. We'll do that as the season goes on, as you'd imagine. We, we have also kind of looked at what we could maybe do with the £2.5 million pounds we've got to spend. It's not a lot of money, but... In this episode, I'll be looking at positions we could perhaps go in and improve. For me, the, the, the kind of areas the most is down the spine of the team. I think that we either sign a striker, a number 10, or a centre half. I think that's the three positions that, for me, the most could do with some depth. I say striker because Giacomacus, yeah, good, 27 years old. So we could maybe look for someone in the future. And the reason I'm not saying, like, you know, oh, we've got Kyogo anyway is because he has only got... That twelve, that that thirteen finishing. So he might. I don't know. Striker's not the biggest priority. The biggest one that I thought was the number ten role because, in my tactic, I want to use a number ten rather than sitting in the, the deeper player. Now we might do that in the, the Champions League games and bring someone back to sit a bit deeper. But for these league games, I think maybe a number ten could be in order. And then centre half, the only other uh, position I'm kind of concerned about just now is there because I think we could maybe find someone who's better than Starfield for the future. Uh, and, and I don't know what Moritz Jens will be like in this game, to be honest. I don't imagine he'll be spectacular. So we could maybe look in there. Those are the three areas. We'll set that up in a recruitment meeting. But right now, I'm happy with the team. And I want to get to the first game of the season. I want to play some football. Behind the scenes, we have been playing some friendlies. And we're doing okay. I mean, since I took over, we, we managed to beat uh, Marseille, who are obviously a good side, 2-1. Um, and then we also beat Notts County 5-2. I mean, we're not going to take much from that. Some big challenges in Standard Liège. Uh, Ronnie Dyla's side. In fact, it should be Ronnie Dyla, isn't it? It should be Ronnie. Where is he? There he is. Ronnie Dyla. Standard Liège and Besiktas before we head into our first game of the season, which is only a, a couple of weeks away now. Um, but yeah, work to be done. We'll hopefully have a recruitment meeting soon. We'll set that up. Um, and then we'll have a look at maybe what we could do. So this is the kind of overhauled recruitment meeting that I was speaking about, which kind of lets you look through uh, position by position before you go into like uh, the players that you or positions you want to to improve. It kind of lets you look through in depth who you've got and where you might need improvement. And as I said, you know, like the areas that I'm kind of looking at is striker, attacking midfielder, and centre half. Now the reasons I'm picking those positions in particular is, as you can see through the depth here. We've not got a great depth of defensive options. You know, Vickers and Starfield will get injured at the same time. And we know this in real life. We know this is the situation. We'd be stuck with Jens and Welsh as the only two options. So maybe bringing in one more player is kind of smart there. And the number 10, the the one player who I need to give more respect to and could honestly play a big part in this season is, is David Turnbull. If you look at his stats, very good player. Um, the thing is, he's actually wanted by Southampton. If we wanted to exploit them for some money, there is potential in that there. But Turnbull could play a big part, but as I said, not the greatest amount of depth in there at the moment um, because, you know, he's older, he's only in a short deal as well. And then up front was the other place we spoke of. We have the two kind of out-and-out -out strikers and then the other two are, are wingers. There is, you know, a lack of depth in maybe other areas as well, full-backs, but I'm not too worried about there. Um, I think we should be okay. Now, in terms of expiring contracts, we've got two players who have... Who 
of course going to be gone come next season for definite uh, and that's Aaron Moy and Scott Robertson will we sign new contracts uh, we'll see we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see um, I'm not too fussed about it right now we've got a full season to try we've got till January to really worry about that I want to make sure we're putting our money in the right places at this point of the, the season so it talks about staff and stuff as well but this is the kind of priority here uh, and this is what I think we need to look at so uh, the recruitment team, I think that there's two areas that are a priority, and that is goalkeeper and uh, it players between the age of 15 and 22. Now, I, I definitely agree that goalkeeper should be a priority. I think that come next season, we'll probably, and you know, once again, this rep, like, kind of represents us in real life at the moment as well, but we'll probably need to sign another goalkeeper. Um, Joe Hart is getting on a little bit. Will Segris be good enough for first team? I, I'm not too sure. And also, yeah, what he's saying, the young young talent, the best young talent we possibly can. So that is the, the kind of two areas that I can agree with that the, the staff are suggesting uh, that the, the chief scout is looking at. As for myself... This is the areas that have been set up so far, and I'm going to add more to this. So we've got UK and Ireland, we've got Europe, the Cinch Premiership, Scotland, Cinch Championship, which, to be honest, I don't think we're going to find a lot of talent in, but we'll, we'll keep it local anyway. And then, obviously, the two areas we've just added. But I want to add, of course, the areas in which I think there should be a priority, and that is the three positions that I have currently spoke about. So I'm going to add them in, and hopefully we'll find players who are good enough. So I'm going to put in uh, attack midfielder, I'm going to put in a centre half. I want them to have a, a good current ability and the potential at least to go up a little bit as well. So I'm going to put in those three positions as I think those are priorities right now. Um, and hopefully they can find some good young players or whatever. But there is a good recruitment focus for us right now. And hopefully the scouts come back with something quite soon. That would be ideal. Let's see what the scouts are offering us right now in terms of what we need. So this is the list of scouted players. <laughs> Timo Pukki top of the list, by the way. You can write that. Um, this is the list of scouted players so far that the, the scouts at the club have looked at. There's quite an extensive list here. Um, and we'll sort it. Just let's see. So the, the highest recommended player is João Pedro of Watford, who is top of the list. But what, <laughs> valued at £30 million, pounds, I think we'd have quite the issue trying to sign him, to be honest. But there you go. He's top of the list. He would be a fantastic signing. Don't get me wrong. 20-year-old Brazilian exciting player. But I, I just don't think that realistically that's that's going to happen. Uh, we can obviously narrow this down and look at positions that, that are you know priorities to us. But there are some good names in here. We've heard some of these names linked with Celtic in the past there's a couple of maybe bargains flying about in here for example so we've got Brandon Cooper who has been suggested a 22 year old Welsh centre half who would be a terrific signing for the future apparently could have up to five star potential and apparently only valued at £180,000 so when we're talking about centre halves his stats don't look bad either you could be looking at Brandon Cooper here as an actual option. So we'll have a look through this. I'll, I'll maybe make a bid for some players. I'm going to have a, a kind of look myself. One player who I have been told to, to sign, shout out to Elliot who watches the series and watches the channel. He has told me that I must go out and sign this lad here who is at Molda and that is Datro Fofana. Uh, he can play striker, he can play in the right wing as well, apparently he turns into an absolute machine, as you can see here, has the potential to become probably one of the best players in the squad, perhaps, um, he is genuinely, I'm considering it, valued at 4.8 million, that's all for fun, I'm very keen on signing him, they're apparently what between 4.7 and 7 million pounds, now that's a lot of money, as a striker my priority right now, well, he's definitely going to stand. I'm going to have a look through a win against uh, Ronnie Dyla's side. That was that was that's not bad. You know, you love to see it. Whereas it one 0 win, a uh, Rio Hatati with the only goal. Lovely. We're we're doing well in preseason so far. But what I was going to say was the priority is at the moment. If you've got any names that you'd like me to sign or you think I should sign, let me know, uh, and I will have a consideration over some of the players. Um, but the one thing is we've not got a lot of money. We've not got a hell of a lot of money. And the only player who I think that I'm willing to get rid of that would bring in money is probably David Turnbull. And even at that, I'm looking at the profile and I'm like, Turnbull's a good player. And I want depth in that area. So why would I get rid of someone in that area? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hmm, maybe not. I, I, I mean, we could maybe get around £7 million if we pushed for him. But I don't know. With the £2.5 million we have, we have, I don't know what the priority is for me. I don't know what position we should definitely go for first. You know what I've not even looked at? The loan market. Who is up for loan this season? This Fofana's agent is dying for me to put this move through. He's, he's, he's wanting this move to happen. Now, it is definitely one that I'm considering strongly. Let me, let me tell you. But I'm like, do I just 
jump right into a rush there. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at my options because there's obviously gonna be players in the range of Celtic who are probably up for transfer. Look, Marouane Fellaini. Now there is a signing. Marouan Fellaini. That that is who we should be signing. <laughs> So these are players who are transfer listed that we could definitely, that I am more than certain, make loan moves for. Um, Enes Unal is up on the transfer market, a striker who, you know, still relatively young, would probably have a very good profile, and if he's listed for transfer, four and a half million pounds, that ain't that bad. Uh, I don't think he's on that, ten and a half grand as well, that's not a bad idea. Roberto Gagliardini, of course, a, a, a member of that team that managed to... Um, that managed to, to, to be part of the, the save with David. Of course, he was a huge part of that. I loved Roberto Gagliardini. He's under bid right now. Should we bring him back? I, I don't know. I don't probably not. Um, but, I mean, he, he could fill in the centre mid area. He, he, he's some quality. Look at his profile. He has a decent shout, but I probably will just will leave him. I always see Perez. Not a bad shout for that number 10 role, by the way, if we maybe brought him in on a loan, but he's on 80 grand a week. Not going to happen. I'm just looking through some of the names. One of the names I really like in here, actually, I must say, one of the names I really like is Nadiem Amiri, who I think could be, genuinely, a very good option. He's transfer list for 2.9 million, but with the potential to work around, maybe, for a loan deal, Nadiem Amiri could be a decent shout. I'm going to scout him because I do genuinely think he could be a decent enough signing for us. Maximilian Philip. There's another name that I recognise, but a little bit older. Probably wouldn't add. Um, and, you know, we do need a little bit of experience, maybe. I, I don't know. Not a lot of younger players on the transfer uh, list. Jonathan de Guzman. Christ, there's a name. Ashley Barnes. Now, if you're looking for guaranteed goals, then Ashley Barnes brings them uh, by the barrel of Felix Paslak. Wow, Paslak is a guy who's been a, you know, he could add depth into the right back here. He's only listed for, you know, £975,000. Could be an actual option to bring in at right back. But, you know, I think that we'll, we'll, have, a, we'll have a think over some of them. I like, this, I like the thought of Nadia Mamiri. Morgan Sanson's okay as well, but Nadia Mamiri, I'm going to wait for a scout report on him because I think that he could be of use, maybe on a loan deal and then we spend money, maybe a centre half. I don't know. Seems like it could work. Oh my god. Talking about loan players. By the way, up and available for loan. Alejandro Garnacho of Manchester United is is an option. I would love to have Garnacho. I don't know if he's any good, but I would love to have Garnacho. Yes. But the thing is, he only plays in the left and right. We don't really need anyone in that. I might still loan him in. We'll see. He's only one point three guy. What if he lose there? You know, he doesn't play enough football. Who cares? You know, it could we could potentially do it, right? I'm just saying it's an option. <laughs> okay, our extensive scouting report is finished on Datro Fofana, who is still looking like an option and looking stronger and stronger by the minute as an option. He's got a good scouting report coming in, which gives him four and a half star potential, perhaps current three star ability. He wouldn't be as good as Kyogo, but he would be better than Jack Marcus, maybe? I don't know. He's looking at him more as a winger than a striker, which is the, the, the problem I have because I don't really need wingers, but... Saying A plus, keep him as a priority. Uh, good wages, obviously the, the the fee for him is a bit high. Is that one that you've got to act on quickly before you know big teams come swarming in in the future? I I don't quite know, but I've acknowledged it. It's certainly an option. I just don't want to blow all my money on someone when there's other areas to, to focus on as well. Uh, I think we played our last friendly. We drew 0-0 with Besiktas, which brings to a close our pre-season. The only games that I was here for was Marcy onwards. So really, Ange Postacoglu is shite. Because he lost to OB. Who the fuck are OB? Where are they from? The Superliga... Okay, so the Danish Superliga, right? That's, you know, it's a decent enough league, but come on, Celtic. Come on, what team did they play, Ange? Oh, it doesn't show you. Anyway... I think I took I think I took chart. Maybe Notts County was my first one in in fact. I don't know, but we've been winning, so that's alright. I'm not that bothered. Right, it's time for the Premier Sports Cup draw. It's actually not even called the Premier Sports Cup anymore. It's the Via Play Cup. But uh, Celtic fan poll: Which team would you be prefer to play? Forty five percent of fans saying are oh, bro. Twenty two percent saying Rangers. Twenty two the hardcore. Um, right, okay, here's the teams that are left in the competition. We're going to do the draw. 
um, for the next round. We're just going to draw all teams, and it's going to be a Glasgow derby of some form. Uh, we are taking on Queen's Park. We'll be away from home. Uh, where are they playing just now against Hamilton? They're playing, I think. So we're away from home. Um, the Hib Oh, wow, the Edinburgh derby. I was about to say the Hibs derby. That Edinburgh derby in the, the, the second round of the Cup. Rangers taking on Kelly, which is, you know, a right good cock shaker of an affair. Um... And yeah, okay. I just say Edinburgh Derby, but Queen's Park, we should get by that. We can rotate heavily in that game. Okay, scouting is finishing up on some players. Ennis Unal and Nadia Amiri have came back with their scout reports. Nadia Amiri, an A minus, would be a terrific signing. He played a, a good bit of football in the last game for Bayer Leverkusen. He would come in and it'd be an improvement on O'Reilly, Turnbull, but not as good as Hitati or Moy. Or Callum McGregor. I still think that if we could work it alone, deal. His stats look decent. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a bit unsure on Nadia Mamiri at this point. I, if a, if a loan deal could be possible, but forty nine grand a week, like come on, that is a lot of money. That is a lot of money, isn't it? And they want us to mandatory future fees. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think we'll leave Nadia M for now. Uh, Ennis Unal, though, looks like he could be good. He's an international, he's got experience. He would come in and be better than Jack and Marcus, apparently. Um, now, when it comes to his finishing, it's 15. Is this the sort of player that Celtic need in the Champions League? Someone with international caps, someone who's scored goals in big competitions, someone that's played at a good level. Is this the kind of European striker that we need? Now, apparently... We could get him as cheap as one hundred and forty thousand pounds, um, five hundred and fifty thousand pounds. I'm going to try it. If we can get Enesu now for five hundred and fifty thousand pounds, I would, I would be, I would be delighted. So I'm going to try it and see what's said, um, because you can't knock back value like that. So we'll see what they say. They probably want a lot more. Two point one million. Now that is quite the fee. Not going to lie, folks. That's that's quite the fee. I would happily give them a percentage. I'd happily give them an, a, a, a league a fee as well. But I think that I would like to pay a lot less money. So to sign Ennis Unal, the thing is, if he, he's going to come in and expect to play football, am I ready to start Ennis Unal over the likes of Giacomacchus and Kyogo? Am I? Am I really? I don't know. I'd happily give them a deal like kind of that looks like that. How would, how would they find that? They don't find it too appealing. I'm trying my best to give them like a million quid up front. Like... Can we can we do that? Would like to present the latest negotiations. They want they're, they're wanting more fucking money. I don't want to pay too much, boys. I really don't. One point nine million. Two that, that would come to three million quid. They're wanting a lot. They're wanting a lot. We'll come back to it because Fofana would be a better signing, wouldn't he? Because Fofana's younger. But then in soon has got five star potential as well. Oh, I don't know, and he's got better finishing. This is difficult. I might need to do a poll for the next video. I think we might actually need to do a poll. Let's see. If I, I want to, let, let, can I can I put them up in comparison with Unal, please? Eh, not Unal with um with Fofana. Where is Fofana? Why can I not see Fofana? Can I do that? Because I feel like that would maybe give me more of a a, a, a kind of you know compare with why can I end Unal? Right here we go. So the green is Fofana and blue is Unal. So Fofana is mentally. Okay, we're not. Have we, is is Unal just got no mental stats or defending stats? Physically the same. Speed goes to Fofana. Vision goes to Fofana. Attacking goes to Unal. Technical goes to Unal. Aerial goes to Unal. So I feel like it's it's quite split between the two. Oh, it's really difficult. We've not fully scouted Unal. That's why we don't have the full report. But wow, who who do you think, boys? Fofana or Unal? And I think we might sign one of them in the next episode. Let me know who you're thinking. I might let you guys decide it. I might. So here's my recruitment update. Christ, no even then. We'll spend so long just talking absolute nonsense. I do apologise. But we've got work to do. This is a, a technical job being safety manager. Um, we're, we're finding um, players in certain areas. We're struggling to find attacking midfielders. We're struggling to find centre-backs. But everywhere else... I think we're finding plenty of recommended players. It's I'm starting to worry a bit about centre half. I must admit, I am kind of worrying a little bit about centre half. So I'm starting to think that maybe we should be spending money on one. Now, if I look at the the players they've gave me, oh wow, Rami 
Oh, what's he valued at? 10 million quid. Not that happened. Dante. Remember Dante? 38 years old. I think I'll pass. Brandon Cooper is kind of... We're not signing Ryan Porteous. Brandon Cooper's kind of jumping off the page at me here. There's someone else who looks like they could be okay. Ro Rob Dickey. Um, what a name. Dickey. Um, but I, I'm kind of swaying towards the signing of this Brandon Cooper character. Because I think his stats look really good. Now, the question is how much money would they want for him? Somewhere between 180k and 1.8 million pounds. I, I am willing to pay a, a, a smallish fee for, for this guy. I think that he'd be a good centre-half sign. And the scouts seem to like him. Um, they want a wee bit more than installments, probably. So we'll say we'll give them we'll give them four installments that lead up to that. We'll give them per league appearance. Yeah, if you want. And a 30% sell-on. Will, will they accept that? They have. I think we're going to sign this Brandon Cooper. He's from Wales, who are also in the World Cup. Let's do it. Do you know what? I think he'll be a good to have. He's fine with being a fringe player for now as well. He's got potential. I think that Brandon Cooper could be a good signing. Because it's super duper. We've got Brandon Cooper. You're no singing the other one. I wonder if there's a way we can scumbag like a future here for um, Alejandro Garnacho because I would happily happily do this if we can get like they would we could we could get them with an option to buy for 16 million pounds i think this could be worth it this is alejandro garnacho who could become one of the best players in the game potentially would they go any lesser than 16 million because i think that's a lot 13 million that they seem pretty set on 16 million and an optional future fee 13 million okay six i'm going to accept it because if he is class the chance to sign one of the wonder kids of this game and one of the wonder kids of world football for 16 million, I think could be huge. I'm doing it. I would spend a whole summer's budget on Garnacho, especially if offers start coming in for the likes of Jota. What a replacement Alejandro Garnacho would be in the future. Think about it. Okay, Brentford and Leo have made offers for Ennis Unal um, for 1.2 million and £1.3 million. So, if we want him, we better act fast. But then we've got for Fana sitting there. Another... Anyway, we'll, we'll think about it in a moment. This is the expectations for the night. This is something new as well. We've now got expectations for every game. So that the board expectation is to win the game. The fans' expectation is to win the game. The fans want to see Moy make his debut more specifically. Mark Kerr, the supporter spokesperson, has made that clear. Michael Nicholson has got no specific expectation. Uh, we should be winning anyway. And after this, we'll kind of wrap up the episode. I'll let you guys have maybe a say on what we do with the rest of our money. And we've sold 53,000 season tickets. It's game day. It's time for our first game. Rangers won in the opening game of the season, which would have been against Livingston. They won by three goals. Um, so it's now time for us to take on Aberdeen. In terms of the tactical instructions, I'm looking forward to seeing my tactic being used for the first time. We've got to set out a bench, obviously. So we'll get, obviously, Kyogo on there, Dyson Maida on there. All the best all the best players on here. Let's let's get them. Let's get them. Should we have Big Cooper on the bench? We probably should. Ralston on there. I want Abel Guard on there. We need Aaron Moy on there. And probably David Turnbull. That is that is a strong, strong squad we've got to play with. And there's players here who, you know, are probably never going to see the light of day in this team. And I look at, you know, Forrest and Robertson. McCarthy, there is definitely scope for them to. Actually, McCarthy's wanted. Let's get him off, get him off the wage bill then. Yes. See, James, James, I'm sorry, son. You've played your couple of games here and there. It's time for you to move on. And talking about a couple of games here and there, it's time for our first game with Celtic Manager, boys. Here are the team sheets then for our first game in charge of the club. It's quite nerve wracking. I just, I, I want to make sure we win. Joe Hart starts and goes, of course, back for Juranovic, Vickers, Starfield, Taylor, McGregor, O'Reilly. Um, and Hatate in the middle three, and then Jota, uh, Haksabanovic, and Jakimakis make up the front three. Well, I'm not even playing a 4 3 3, I'm actually playing a 4 2 3 1. And here's the Aberdeen side, a couple of names that you'll recognise, a couple you might not. But there we go, it's time to hit the dressing room. We're favourites, let's show them why we're favourites. I'm expecting I'm expecting nothing but a, a, a rampant Celtic win here. Uh, we interview in the tunnel, let's just press the generic answers. And here we Go, we're underway. Oh my god, I'm a bit, I'm a bit gassy. Wow, that's slow. Let's speed, speed that up. Extended highlights. No, we'll go key. Thank you very much. I think is it TV? I think I use TV. I think that yeah. Okay, right. We've got a corner. I'm still trying to fix my settings. Haksabanovic swings it in, and just like that, the first goal of the Ryan Fitzsimons era arrives by 
fucking the most beautiful, gorgeous combination that there ever could be. Hack Sabanovic gets the corner in, and Giacomakis, with that sexy napper of his, puts it in the back of the net. We are scoring from corners. Ange Postacoglu's Celtic can't do that. We're already one up on Ange. <laughs> I say with no shame whatsoever. Whatever happened to shame? Anyway, we're back to the highlights already. I didn't even get the time to set up my game properly. What a start to my Celtic tenure. Here's Callum McGregor, who's going to switch it out wide. Juranovic. He's running back a little bit, but it's okay. I'm wanting to see the, the, the kind of positives of my tactic working here. And we're going to see, I think, a mix between the likes of Brendan Rodgers' style and Ange's style with this tactic. Anyway, here's Jota, who's on the right-hand side for me. Jota turns around. Oh, is that not a foul ref? He's not giving it. McGregor swings it in. Hank Sabanovic gets pushed. And it is a penalty. Just like that. We have the chance to go up 2-0. No VAR check or nothing. Celtic have a penalty. Josip Juranovic will step up and score. Once again, can Ange Postecoglou's Celtic score penalties? No, they cannot. Can mine? Yes. A goal from a corner. A goal from a penalty. You wouldn't believe that this is Celtic. Josip Juranovic, 2-0 inside 7 minutes. This is going to be a good season, I think, boys. We've got a free kick from a juicy position. Juranovic has already scored from a penalty. And he scores from a free kick too. Josip Juranovic on a brace on the opening game of the season. The man is on flames. Fireball. Literal fireball from Josip. What a free kick, son. What a free kick. I'm ignoring the gap between our midfield and defence. Thank you, John Kennedy, for letting me know, but I'm, I'm not really worried when we're 3-0 up 26 minutes into the game about the gap between our midfield and defence. Haksabanovic tries to play it through. It is intercepted, and Aberdeen will have the chance to build from the back now. The goalkeeper getting a lot of time with the ball. Juranovic, uh, who's so far been player of the game, you could say, was the one that tried to clear. Well, now, what's oh, was Taylor doing? He's just standing assessing his options. McGregor was spaced. Jota finds Jaka Marcus who shoots from range, and it wasn't a bad effort. Um, I didn't think we'd see many shots from range for Georges Jaka Marcus. But we're going into half time, and what a first half performance. We're flying, boys. 3 0. Uh, very happy with the performance. Taylor and Juranovic seem. What's Juranovic unhappy for me? I just said I'm very happy. You've scored twice. Shut up, you greeting face bastard. Anyway, let's get into the second half where we'll start to rotate things a little bit soon and, and give some other players a chance. I think I left Burnaby at home. I, I wanted to bring him on because Taylor's probably struggled the most in this game. But uh, yeah, Hatati not really been in it as much either, but has a chance in the first sort of 15 minutes before I make a, probably a triple change. Here's O'Reilly. Slips a fantastic, gorgeous ball. And what a gorgeous finish as well. That is sexy. Liquid football, sexy 1-1-8 liquid football right there. And Giacomakis, just like Josip Juranovic, is now on a brace. But look at this. Touch, scans the run, and Giacomakis takes a good touch, takes a good finish as well. And we're up 4-0, five minutes into the start of the second half. It's so fucking easy. Just to admire this for a minute before I make subs. 17 shots, eight on target. They've had one. I am, a, I am I am the spicky one. I am the spicky one. Right, it's time to make changes. I'm going to bring David Turnbull on because I think Hattati's struggled a little bit. I want to make a triple change. I'm kind of worried of, of, of taking the chance of a hat-trick away for Giacomacus. I want to bring on Kyogo, but I don't want to take it away. I'm going to take off Haxa. I'm going to take off Jota as well. I'm just going to make big, big changes. And do you know what? I'm actually going to make four changes right now. I'm going to bring on Aaron Moy. People wanted him to make his debut. He's going to get his debut. I'm going to bring him on alongside Callum McGregor. Which means we've got one sub left, which is ideally for Kyogo. If, if Jack and Marcus can maybe get a hat-trick. We're going to go attacking and, and see if we can maybe find him one more. But he's coming off at the 75th because I want Kyogo to get some football. Right, okay. Jack Mack has had his chance for the hat trick. He's not got it, so he's coming off. I'm probably angry that he's not getting the chance, but I want Kyogo to try and, and try and get some minutes and try and maybe find a goal for us as well. I oh, don't throw away a clean sheet, boys. Not now. Not like, not like this. Clarkson stands over a free kick for Aberdeen, swings it in. It's cleared only as far as Clarkson. A lot of space opened up there for Milne, who takes a shot and it does hit the post, but. The first big chance of the game for Aberdeen with about 10 to go. Can we maybe find one more, no? Just one more would be nice. A 5-0 in the opening game of the season. I'll take four. And I think we're only getting, we are only getting four. There you go. That's the opening game of the season. Um, Juranovic with a brace. Giacomakis with a brace. You know what? 
You know what? I'm 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 pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm 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 pretty goddamn happy. Can we start singing it already? We're at the top of the league. Okay. I mean, we are technically looking down on Rangers, but one goal ahead of them in the goal difference. So, you know what? A very tasty start to the season. I'll have that. Wow. Um, James McCarthy is a wanted man, by the way. A wanted man. I'm going to accept the best offers for him. Shakhtar being the best. You know I'm just going to accept them all apart from Atlas. Atlas are at a wee bit, but everybody else offering similar fees. Shakhtar offering the highest, but it's not going to make a hell of a lot of a, a difference. So, just going to accept them all. A lot of bizarre moves there, but... He has wanted Jakimakis. Um, nice for him. I'm not going to the press conference. You can bugger off. But a pretty ideal start to early campaign. Right, so I guess the biggest thing is for the next episode, I want to know your opinion, lads. I want to know who you think should be the priority signing. Who should I sign at Celtic? Now, the two people that I've been looking at, and Unal, the thing is, a bid's already came in for him, so we'll need to act fast. But Unal is one of the options. Fofana is the other option. Should we bring one of these two players in? Let me know your thoughts um, for the next episode. We've obviously signed a centre-half. We're looking to sign Garnacho on loan. Uh, one of these signings would be a striker. And then if we have anything left, we might look for a central midfielder. But for now, that's pretty much it this episode. The next episode when we're back, uh, we'll probably just kind of round off the transfer window maybe when oh, well wow i don't know we'll see i will see where we are we'll see where we are we might skip a couple of games i might come to you from a certain point as we always do with these series but yeah i hope you've enjoyed a win nice and some progress some progress a signing too cheerio